In most modern societies and cultures, cannibalism, or the act of humans consuming other humans, is generally looked down upon and ostracized. However, in the case we'll be covering today, a particular cannibal in Japan was hoisted up to the ranks of the rich and famous simply due to the public's fascination with social taboos. The cannibal in question is Issei Sagawa, also known as the Kobe Cannibal, the son of a wealthy businessman who eventually became a cannibal, murderer, and necrophile before using a legal loophole to avoid jail time and use his sordid reputation to attain notoriety and international publicity. Issei Sagawa was born in Kobe Hyogo Prefecture on April 26, 1949. Issei was blessed enough to be born into a wealthy family, with his father being the successful businessman Akira Sagawa, who was the president of Kurita Water Industries, and his grandfather being a very successful editor for the Asahi Shimbun. While he may have been lucky when it came to his family, Issei's actual birth was incredibly rough, with him being born prematurely, which caused him to be abnormally small reportedly small enough to fit into the palm of his father's hand. Not only this, but he would go on to develop a disease known as enteritis, which caused inflammation of the small intestine and intense abdominal pain. However, he was able to make a recovery after receiving multiple potassium and calcium injections, but it is likely that this illness and smaller stature helped contribute to his introverted personality. According to Issei himself, his childhood was phenomenal and without worry, spending his carefree youth surrounded by a pair of loving parents and the joys of nature. Issei's cannibalistic urges didn't wait long to take hold after he discovered the concept in a fairy tale. Following this, he began to have nightmares that involved himself and his younger brother being boiled alive in a big pot and eaten, but it wasn't long before he began to imagine himself as the chef in the dream, and the fear of cannibalism morphed into fascination. His first actual urge to eat another human being arrived while he was in the first grade after seeing the quivering meat on a male classmate's thighs after which he thought to himself, mmm, that looks delicious. Despite his first cannibalistic desire being towards another man, Issei knew he wasn't homosexual, and eventually would make the horrid discovery after watching a Grace Kelly film at a young age that his cannibalistic type were white women with blonde hair and blue eyes. Issei grew up in a sheltered household and knew nothing of these more primal human instincts, so when these desires cropped up, he had no clue what they were or how to deal with them. And according to Issei, this caused him to experiment in taboo ways, such as participating in bestiality with the family dog and imagining and associating cannibalism with sexual desire and pleasure. Keeping his desires hidden for his child and teenage years, no one was ever suspicious of anything being wrong with him, and little attention was paid to keeping an eye on him. In 1972, around 23 years old, Issei was attending Waco University in Tokyo, where he chose to pursue an interest in literature, while also taking classes in German. One night, while out walking, he passed by a beautiful German woman and was so overcome by the desire to eat her that he chose at that moment to follow her home and eat her. He watched her walk to her apartment, where he later broke in by climbing in through the window. The woman had gone to sleep by that point, giving Issei the freedom to search around for a weapon, and he eventually settled on an umbrella, although it's unclear what his plan for using it actually was. As he approached the bed, the woman thankfully woke up and screamed, causing Issei to make a break for it out the door. However, he was swiftly caught by patrolling policemen who were alerted by the scream. Issei had been caught early in his crime, leading authorities to charge him with an attempted rape charge as no one knew what his true intentions really were, and Issei made sure to keep his mouth tightly shut. According to Issei, he never planned on murdering the woman and simply wanted to cut off pieces of her body to eat and sneak away without alerting her. In what would tragically become a reoccurring theme in Issei's life, he faced no consequences for his disgusting plan, as his father, Akira, paid the German woman off and promised to send Issei to therapy, allowing Issei to get away without a mark on his record or any jail time. Akira Sagawa at least made good on his promise and sent Issei to therapy, where he finally admitted to another human being for the first time that he craved human flesh. Issei's therapist, reasonably disturbed by this confession, attempted to mark Issei as a high-risk individual and get him the help he so evidently needed. However, before this could happen, Akira once again stepped in. Embarrassed by the idea of having people know his son was deeply troubled, Akira instead arranged to have Issei temporarily exiled to Paris, France, where he would continue to study literature. Issei was swiftly enrolled in Sorbonne University and left for Paris on his 28th birthday. According to Issei, by this point, his mind was wholly consumed with the desire to eat women, and his desire to eat a woman had changed into an obligation. Apparently, while staying in Paris, Issei would bring a prostitute home with him every single night and attempt to shoot them. However, every night his finger froze and he wasn't able to bring himself to kill them. This resistance was well on its way to disappearing. 
While attending school in Paris, Issei became friends with a Dutch woman named Renee Hardeveld, and according to him, the two had a genuine and deep friendship. On June 11, 1981, Issei invited his classmate and supposed genuine friend over to his apartment under the guise of working together to translate poetry for class, as well as eating dinner. However, unbeknownst to Renee, Issei had decided she was what he was having for dinner. Over the course of their friendship, Issei had become totally enraptured by Renee and planned on eating her to absorb her energy and gain characteristics in her that he felt he lacked, such as strength, beauty, and charisma. In later interviews with Issei, he said that he hadn't necessarily intended to kill Renee that night, claiming a glass of her bodily fluids or a nibble on her pubic hair would have been enough to satiate him. But he had been too nervous to ask. After arriving at the apartment on that fateful night, Renee sat at a desk and began to read poetry into a tape recorder with her back facing Issei. Issei then took this opportunity to shoot her in the back of the neck with a rifle, the shock of which caused him to faint. After waking up from his stupor, Issei realized he had passed the point of no return and began to carry out his sick and twisted plans. First, Issei slept with Renee's corpse before attempting to bite directly into her right buttock. At this point, Issei made the discovery that his teeth weren't sharp enough to break through human skin, and he had to leave the apartment in order to purchase a butcher knife that could get the job done. Upon returning home, he began to cut up the defiled corpse, stating later that no matter how deep I cut, all I saw was the fat beneath the skin. It looked like corn, and it took a while to actually reach the red meat. The moment I saw the meat, I tore chunks off with my fingers and threw it into my mouth. This gruesome process continued over the following two days, with Issei repeatedly raping, mutilating, and eating the body, all the while listening to a recording Rene was making as he shot her, reliving his poor victim's last moments over and over again. Issei ate most of the pieces from the body raw, but did actually fry and season some pieces, as well as store many away in his freezer. Eventually, Issei realized that he needed to get rid of Renee's body, and began the process by cutting up what remained of the corpse with a hatchet before wrapping it in cloth and stuffing it into two suitcases. As he packed away the evidence of his crime, Issei took a moment to lift up Renee's now decapitated head by the hair, at which point the reality of what he had done finally settled in, and Issei realized he was finally a true cannibal. Taking the suitcase in hand, Issei hailed a taxi and rode it to the nearby Bois de Boulogne Park, with the intention of discreetly throwing the suitcases into an out-of-the-way bush. Unfortunately for Issei, his small stature made it difficult for him to carry the bags, and he attracted the attention of all of the other park goers as he dragged the two bags through the park, especially when the bottoms of the suitcases began leaking and dripping blood. Realizing the jig was up and the cops would soon be notified, Issei decided to just drop the bags and run as fast as he could back to his apartment where he planned on eating as much of the human meat in his freezer as fast as he could before his arrest. Two days after the body was discovered in the park, the police raided through Issei's apartment, where they found copious amounts of meat still in the freezer. Issei immediately confessed to the authorities, apparently telling them, I killed her to eat her. Following his arrest, Issei waited in custody for two years while awaiting trial, before the judge overseeing the case declared that anyone willing to kill, mutilate, and eat another human being was mentally unwell and not capable of standing trial, instead sending him to reside indefinitely at a French mental institution. Once again, Issei's father, Akira, refused to let Issei be the stain that ruined their family's image, and he negotiated to have Issei transferred to Japan, where Issei would have been detained, except that documents pertaining to Issei's case were sealed by French authorities and not released to the Japanese police, allowing Issei to squeeze through a legal loophole and check himself out of the mental institution and return to his home country as a free man. Issei capitalized on his disgusting crime and obsession in order to make money, signing a publishing deal to release memoirs he had written while institutionalized, starring in several pornographic videos alongside women who were not informed of his background beforehand, being featured in a Japanese exploitation film, writing a manga about Renee's murder, being featured on multiple daytime talk shows and cooking shows, and even being hired to leave food reviews for select restaurants. Issei talks openly and publicly about the joys of eating human flesh and encourages society to become more accepting of it, and even going so far as to claim that he plans on consuming another human being again before he dies. What are your thoughts on the case? Do you think Issei should be rearrested? Let us know down in the comments and be sure to tell us any other cases you'd like us to cover. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, then be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and ring the bell to get notified whenever we post a new video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.